this exploit is bad. And we're talking unauthenticated remote code execution bad. And the worst part about this exploit, we don't even have a name for it yet. I mean, how are we supposed to talk about how bad this exploit is if we can't put a scary name on it? We're gonna talk about this exploit. We're gonna talk about what it targets. We're gonna talk about how the exploit works. We're gonna talk about how attackers have reacted to this exploit and the proof of concepts that have already proliferated online. And we're gonna talk about how you can protect yourself and your organization. But first, let's talk about the exploit itself. It is CVE 2022-1388. And if nobody else is going to give this exploit a name then I will. We're gonna call it Big Rest and it targets F5's Big IP service. Big IP is a set of network appliances that are provided by the company F5 that are basically operate as a bunch of different things on a network. They can be everything from a firewall to a load balancer to an encryption gateway to a deep packet inspector and many many more things. They really can be used in a number of ways on a network and you really are trusting these devices to be secure and to do their jobs well because that security has has ripple effects on the security of other devices and systems on your network. They're pretty good and they are used by 48 of the top 50 companies in the world and a number of other large organizations worldwide. So needless to say, the attack surface is incredibly broad. On May 4th, F5 set their blasters from stun to kill and they published this article that I have commented down in the video description. We're gonna talk more about this article in just a moment. But they basically disclosed this vulnerability and basically disclosed the CVE ID as well and they disclose that there are patches already available for it as well. This CVE ranks 9.8 out of 10, which is pretty crazy how high that is, but it also may be a fairly low score considering how massive the attack service really could be and how easily exploitable it is. Basically, there's an issue with Big IP, and this issue is actually a feature. It is not a bug, it's a feature. And that feature is called slash management slash TM slash util slash bash. And that service is an endpoint within Big IP that allows users to connect and execute commands as root. Yep. That's it. The craziest part is that in some cases, you don't even need to provide a password. Literally all you need is network access. Once attackers have access, they're able to connect to this service in the big IP endpoint, execute unauthenticated commands. And for anybody not tracking yet, root is the highest level of permissions that you can have on any particular endpoint. Basically, if you get root, you own that system and you can do whatever you want after that. Literally anything, you can make the uh, device float if you want. Okay, not literally everything, but you get the picture. Picture. You can basically run any kind of file, you can gain any kind of connection, you can basically do whatever you want from an attacker and, and sysadmin standpoint with a root. Needless to say, this CV has earned every point of that 9.8 out of 10 score. And that even gets worse again whenever you put into the context of what Big IP is and how it really needs to be trusted in the network for you to be able to trust everything else that's going on. Again, these can do everything from deep packet inspection to being a firewall. And if an attacker gains control of your Big IP, IP endpoint, then they could violate the security of any one of those things. How can you trust if the rest of the traffic on your network is secure if you can't even trust that your firewall itself is secure? As you can imagine, attackers have already taken to this exploit pretty well. They have taken a number of proof of concepts or POCs that are already available that make the exploitation of this vulnerability much simpler. And they've already started to exploit en masse this exploit across the internet. Once they have access, they may be able to migrate their access to other services or connections, basically maintaining persistence on the network and performing follow-on attacks. Those follow-on attacks could be sold to other attackers. They could be used for ransomware outbreaks. They could be used just to sit on the network and basically spy on the traffic. But needless to say, after exploitation, it's really gonna take intensive scanning and forensics work on the part of the defense to be able to catch the attackers on the network. It won't necessarily just take patching. And that takes us to how you can defend yourself from this exploit. Like I said, detection and forensics is absolutely required, especially if you suspect that your network has already been breached. This article that I linked from F5 is down in the description. It includes a number of indicators of compromise that you can dive into. And I've also linked another article from sky.io that has some other good information as well. However, with, really with those IOCs, you're kind of a assuming that the attackers are not cleaning up after themselves. So if it's a more advanced threat group, 
you might have a little bit more work to do. Another thing that you can do, and this is honestly gonna be a much better fix for preventing future exploits, is to implement the patch. In, in the article from F5, there's a table that shows a list of the versions of Big IP that are vulnerable, and then a list of the versions where the patch has been implemented. So definitely, as soon as you possibly can, implement this patch. This video is being released on Tuesday, so you know it's patch Tuesday, get it done. And that really will be the best bet hopefully to preventing future exploits, but it may not necessarily do you any good if you suspect you've already been breached with this exploit. Now this vulnerability leaves some questions. Again, this being a feature, that's really a huge concern as to why this feature exists in the first place, given that it really seems like a gaping hole in defense that an attacker can walk through. It's definitely a concern on how a vulnerability like this could make it through quality control and make it to market. Another concern is how many times this vulnerability has already been exploited by attackers before this was discovered. It certainly highlights the importance of patching and monitoring and detection and how the work of cyber defenders certainly is not getting any easier as time goes on. So we're going to continue to track this, but if you're curious about one of those threat groups that might be advanced enough to have exploited this vulnerability sometime in the past before it was disclosed, check out this video on Sandworm. Also be sure to hit that like button so this video can reach new audiences and subscribe if you haven't already. With all that, We'll see you all next time. Bye.